can be only one podcast, and may it be the Prince of the Universe. Hi, folks. I'm Matt. And I'm Wes, Midnight Sugar from the previous podcast. <laughs> hey. What's up? You uh, A few weeks ago, mm-hmm. you went to uh, Comic-Con. Comic-Con in Dallas. Dallas Comic-Con. Now, uh, Megan and I used to go to this one. I thought that, it, well, this was years ago. I thought the vendors were excellent. I mean, they gave you some good deals. There's a lot of good people there. Megan always got great deals whenever she went, whenever we went. Uh, it's got a nice cachet of uh, stars, celebrities there at times. And uh, the only thing that I despise about Dallas is the uh, lack of AC. No, I'm kidding. The um, What I'm thinking about is uh, the, uh, uh, the, the people who work there. Um, they were extremely rude. Now, this is years ago. This is about five years ago. So things obviously could have changed. But they were extremely rude and inept at their job. You mean like the uh, staff that were in the con part or the people that the ran the... The staff that re- helped guide the lines and ran the con. and Sure. And it was just a disaster. It was just the ultimate... And we'd gone a couple of years, and then I just stopped going at all. I said, Megan, I know... We enjoyed the vendors and everything. It's in Dallas and everything. But I said, I- I'll be honest, I'll-, I'll never go to one of these again. And it's just like when he asked for the guy who runs it, when he asked for feedback, some people gave feedback. And I gave feedback, too. I said, hey, your guys are very rude. They were talking about back at people. We were just trying to say, hey, there's line jumpers here. You guys got to do something about it. And we were told that they were going to throw us out if we kept complaining. I'm like, but they're jumping. There goes another, and another guy just walked behind her just to jump in line. I said, there goes another guy. And so she finally pulled him out. Right. But it was like, what? Why would we make this up? And we're not. We're not being rude. We're just saying, hey, you may not want to stay here because there's people jumping, you know, saving spots in line. Well, they didn't have any issues like that this year. Well, that's, that's for good. sure. That's I mean, good. No, that's good. They were on it. Well, yeah, because I mean, people can. Ch- I mean, cons can change. They can get better over time, and that's what he did. Also, I remember another one that I didn't like. One of the big stars he billed is going to be there, but wasn't. And we were kind of disappointed in that, but then later on we found out that this guy had canceled a few days ago, but he didn't announce it because he didn't want anyone cash and uh, get asking for refunds. So he still billed it like that guy was coming, just to avoid getting refunds back. Now again, it may be under new hands too, but right or management could have gotten better. So I'm glad. I'm glad. Now, uh, so tell me about this experience here. Who all did you go with? What was the, what was the plan? I went with. Uh Two people that are referenced on this podcast from time to time. Heath, One's been on here. Yep, Heath. and Who's uh, asleep right now. Correct. Yeah, who asked to be on the podcast today, <laughs> and we offered him a seat. We have a seat right there for him, in a mic, ready for him to go. And yet, yet bedtime for Mr. Futch is uh, 8.30 or 8, 8 p.m.? Mm, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I don't know what time range. he has his warm milk, but does he be- at some point he has to, he gets tuckered out early. Does he beat? Does Dom beat him to bed, or does he go to bed before Dom? That's the question. Uh, I don't know, but he's definitely on a different time time frame. But you told the man he had a seat at the table. He asked what time, and it's almost like you said two a.m. Yep, he was he was <laughs> he was quick to say thanks, but no thanks. <laughs> Even though he's been here, we've done it at nine. Well, but you maybe know, our company day, isn't worth doing he, it twice. But you know what? He's still recovering from a big trip. Probably so, so. He's just, you know, a little tuckered out because when you when you spend the weekend with the company that he spent the weekend in, it's it can be a little little too much excitement. A little for overwhelming. Him. A little overwhelming. Has to take some senses deep are breaths. overly heightened from like like you said, get some sanka or uh, uh, get a get get a get a nice cup of hot tea or warm cocoa, warm milk like you said. Yeah. Easy. And easy then uh, into it. our friend Brandon went with us, the comic guru himself. Yep. So uh, always fun. Yeah, there. I went with him in 2019, also, and uh, had a good time. Then yeah, also. for anyone who doesn't know, Brandon is is one of the gang from the mall that we all used to work at back when we were kids too. So we've known Brandon for decades at Correct. this point. So yeah, so and you well, actually we've known Heath for decades too. Yep. So yeah, because he was one of the mall rats too. So yeah. So it's nice that y'all do this. This is almost like an annual thing i mean you had to skip last year but an annual thing because you have done this before yeah they've done it i think they went to four in a row and then you started yeah i, I picked up 
the slack in 2019, missed 20, and came back 21. There you go. There so. you go. Okay, so overall, how how was the ambiance? Uh, it was a, I, th- I think it was a little smaller than 2019. It seemed like there was a few less vendors, which makes sense. Makes sense, yeah. Uh, I think that's the across the board. I just watched uh, live footage from Gen Con, a board game thing, and they said the smaller people had much more space. The the, the aisles were wider, right. you know, because there wasn't as much vending space. All the big vendors decided to pass this year, but they said it was actually really nice because it was like you weren't you know, squashed. It wasn't quite point. as overwhelming. Yeah, yeah. And so, this is the type of experience you had too. Yeah, I the I think the biggest takeaway uh, that we kind of all agreed on is the the gigantic jump in pricing that's happened from 2019 sure. with 21. Yeah. With everything in the collector market just really. So, would you say that comic books are coming back? As collectibles, I definitely I mean, think obviously that their the, value is re- returning. Yeah, I definitely think that people are rediscovering it, and definitely people that have held on their collections for you know thirty to forty years are definitely jumping into the uh, professional grading side of it, where you're taking books that you may think are blank but are actually higher or lower, which is going to greatly determine the. It's like know, your antique roadshow, but with comics. Where the guy yeah, tells you, well, here's you, what we have here. Yeah, I here's think what you, you got. Yeah, I think you, you got could, some good stuff here, and then this one's not so good. Um, yeah, I think I think here. there's a certain amount of that to it. So right. now you I, got some books graded. Yeah, I got a couple things done. Uh, Brandon, uh, I took two books. Brandon took sixteen. 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 What's the average? Did you see? Uh, for most people, I don't know what the average was. Okay, but. Uh, the backpack that he carried around that had 16 slabbed comics in it was uh it it was i don't know what it was like for the gulf war what you carried in <laughs> backpacks when you're fighting for the country's freedom but that backpack was pretty doggone heavy okay it's like a cinder block he carried a few cinder blocks in there and just kind of towed it around if it was 16 a, that's a lot that's a lot that's a lot to tag, tag around I'll be honest there was one year I brought just about every book from my favorite author to have him sign mm-hmm. I learned that was a bad bad idea and by the time we got finally I said Megan I can't tell this around we need to find him now got him to sign all the books and I said okay we gotta take this out of the car we can't stay here I've got to get rid of this backpack because at first you're thinking okay a little half but i can take it but then as you're marching around that's that's not a good idea and i've never done like that again i've always done little books at a time now true yeah and that uh, rookie mistake so to speak right but he's done this five six times in a row well he's determined (laughs) the little engine that could yes was he i think i can i think he had had enough (laughs) after about 20 minutes of that okay Yep. Okay, he needed a can of spinach like Popeye to kind of... I don't know if it was spinach. (laughs) Okay. All right, so you got some... What would you get graded? Were you happy? Yeah, I I, I took just a a couple Batman books that I was happy with. Um, And... uh, so yeah, all of that went well. Just to clarify, we've spoken about this. You've sold off a lot of your collection back in the day, right? Yeah, a lot. Of, I don't have a whole lot left, right? Um, and so the Batman's that you have are these '90s Batman's or these '80s older, '80s Batman's? 80s, yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's just some, just a few like key issue stuff from back then. Uh, Brandon took Silver Age stuff. He took modern stuff. Right. He he's, had a real big mix of of books. Everything. Yeah. yeah. He's he's still into com. That's one guy who hasn't changed in his love for comics. Correct. Yeah. He's basically stayed the same on that collection. Yeah. He kind of bags it, boards it, puts it in a box, and if he wants to read it, we'll read the digital version, and he doesn't even touch his comics. Of course. Which you know, it's pretty. Uh, I get it. Yeah, dedicated. It 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 definitely is dedicated. Definitely is dedicated. He's true to the crew. That that's true. That's true. That's true. Good 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 to, good good to hear. Yeah. But getting the digital version, so it's all about the pristine collection to ha- to look at them. I guess every once in a while, and go. This is a seven point four. This is a six point three. Definitely eight point zero. Mm-hmm. My baby. So yeah. Yeah. 
So, so how was Brandon with his, his 16 books get graded? How was he? Uh, I think he was satisfied. Okay. I think he may have saw a few opportunities differently than they saw, but, you know. And now, now, who does these? Is it Diamond? Well, there's two companies. There's one called CGC. Oh, CGC. And there's That's another the one, one called CBCS. And That's I don't who, know CBCS. Well, CBCS, from what I understand... Uh, is based out of Dallas. Oh, okay. So they actually just went to the con, took books on Friday and Saturday, and then brought them back Saturday and Sunday. Okay. So yeah. All right. Right on. Yeah. So it was kind of a kind of a cool thing to do. That so when we go back next year, uh, I'll definitely try to take a few more things if I pick up along cool. the way. Cool. That's nice. And, and for anyone who doesn't know, when you grade a comic book, that kind of appraises its value gives it a certified ranking where you would say okay this is this much and this is how much you would charge right so when you think see things on ebay that is graded that means it has been validated that this is the correct price correct in in the ballpark yeah 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 rather than somebody else's uh just selling subjective subjective opinion correct correct Mm -hmm. yeah Okay, nice. What else did you get? Did you get anything? Uh, I didn't get anything actually. Okay. You so know, no, I, no, no shiny baubles. No, I mean I was tempted. You know, when you're what it, tempted you? Well, I think when you're just around it and you're just in the hustle and bustle and you're seeing things, you're like, oh, that might be good. And then when you know you get yeah. back to your room, you kind of come down from that high. It's kind of like being in a casino, like where That's you hear everything true. going off. Ding 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 ding. It's something nice. And, you're thinking, but. I'm just going to like it for right now. I just want to hold it in my hand for a few minutes. That's really it. And it's so. like a casino. You can do a lot of people watching. There's a yeah. lot to take in at a con. Were, uh, were there costumes? Or were there there were cosplay? costumes. My favorite was a guy that had an Incredible Hulk bodysuit okay. with a Darth Vader helmet. And right. I said, you know, if I was four years old... That would have been the right mix. That would be exactly what I would have wanted to be. <laughs> the Incredible Hulk and Darth Vader. It's like if you could go back in time and give yourself a Halloween costume. Oh yeah, it's kind of like be it. you know when kids like when you're little and you're like your parents like give you the ability to dress yourself and yeah. like you come out with like shorts and cowboy boots on and like a, like a pajama t-shirt and it's just well, my my two coolest shirts as a kid was my Return of the Jedi t-shirt which had Wicked on it which I thought was just awesome and then the other one was a pterodactyl. Flying over a exploding volcano, and that—that that was worn for. If I was wearing that at your birthday party, that means we were best friends. Cause I dressed up for you. Did you not see the pterodactyl flying over the exploding volcano? That sounds pretty cool now. Actually, yeah, yeah, I, I think yeah, it was pretty cool back then. But that was my <laughs> one of my favorite shirts huh. that I did. But um, anyway, I'm sorry. Anyway. Yeah. No. Yeah. There's a lot of cosplay. Uh, you know, I think last time we had talked about like. Heavy on Harley Quinn. There was a lot less of that this time. Good. And I'm um, kind of shocked because Suicide Squad came out. And you yeah. think that'd be all the rage again. Yeah, there was a lot more just different genres of stuff Good. rather than just comic-based. Good, because usually there's just Harley Quinn and Deadpool. And then a bunch of one-offs here and there. So I have this leather-like hat that's kind of like a Crocodile Dundee fedora-almost-looking okay. thing. This Australian outback hat. Right. Uh that some girl walked up to me and said, are you wearing John's hat? So if anyone knows who this John is that wears a leather hat, let us know. Because we asked John's. a handful of people that the con, they're like, I have no idea what you're talking about. John's. Somebody named John. Okay. Yeah. Interesting that she would think you would know who John was. Because it's kind of a kind of a normal name. For sure. Is that Mr. Smith's hat? You know, I don't, it's definitely uh, not John Snow. John Snow, not his hat, uh-huh. not his hat. Pretty sure. Yeah, that's weird. Yep. She just came up to you, and then you said no, and then she walked away. I'm like, I don't think so. Because <laughs> okay. I thought maybe she would say, "Well, the reason I'm asking you is blank," but she had given up at that point. She's like, oh, "He doesn't know John." Yeah, dummy. <laughs> Why am I wasting my time with you? Right. I thought you were cool. I thought you had John's hat. Right. I'm going to figure out. I'll go find John's hat on my own. That was probably some spy code. You were supposed to give the right answer, and she would have given you like a bag of money or a secret file. Like an or upside something. down pineapple or something? Maybe. Huh. Yeah. There you, there I missed you my go. opportunity. 
Oh, well. Okay. But yeah, we, uh, you know, Comic Con is just fun to go to. Uh, and we did a yeah. podcast recently about the mall. Yes. And part yes. of what going to the mall was about was the social aspect when you were younger. You know, for the, like, that was kind of like your first date. Like, your parents would drop you off if you were going to go see a movie with a girl or something. That was like a. So, going to Comic Con is you can just walk around and just take it all in. Yeah. Granted, you're paying for it. But, you know, most things, if you pay for it, you know, you're getting a little bit more than if it was free. So, that's fine. Uh, Obviously. But it's just. Just it's just kind of cool to walk around and look at things like that. Of course, yeah, of course. Um, so, did you get to go into any? Uh, they had in in the past. They used to have um, what's it called uh, like panels, and panels stuff. and stuff. Did you get to go to any of that? There wasn't or? much of that this time, at okay. least from what was advertised to gotcha. us. Uh, they did obviously had the normal celebrity type situation where you could get in line. And, of course, and be take your picture, get a right. Any wrestlers? No wrestlers, and huh. they had even said that it, that it was weird that Dallas rarely had any type of wrestlers because a lot of cons do have that now. Yeah, that's so, that's kind of a a staple. Maybe so maybe that the the promoter whoever runs that maybe they don't work with that booking agent. Well, that's true because it all is a bunch of agencies. You go through Tennessee. You gotta have wrestlers. That's one of their uh, necessities there. And I'll be honest: when Ric Flair walks into that con, you know, you know, the whole place gets electrified. Um, but uh, <clears throat> anyway, so okay, so did you do any of the fine dining in Dallas? Uh, we uh, we stay at the the Omni Hotel, which is where oh. the con is. That kind of cuts down, yeah, on okay. and kind of riffraff where you're. You know, if you're buying That's stuff right and, and saves on travel correct. time, right? Yeah, yeah, it's worth it. You pay a little bit more, but you get what you pay for for sure. Yeah, the yeah. convenience side of it. I don't blame you. So we just went to the one little restaurant down there and had a few drinks, and uh, the next night we go to this uh, st- Brazilian steakhouse there, and uh, you I've, just I've never pile been to on one. Beef. I've always wanted to be. They're the ones that just walk around, folks. If no one's ever been to one, they walk around with sticks of meat and whatever, and you just have a little, I don't know, a little green well, and red. Well, yeah, you flip your card over. Yeah, flip your card over. And if they see green, they come up to you and say, and you all take right, your little tell me when. And you know, take yeah. take the meat. Here you Correct. go. So was it good? It was good. It was, yeah. Uh, when we got in our Uber after that, the three of us, our Uber driver, uh, had the observation that we smelled very meaty. I said, say we just got back from Arby's. So well, she picked us up there, so she knew we weren't at Arby's. Okay, well, that's a very smart comment to make. Yes. Oh, y'all smell meaty. Oh, good job, Sherlock. <laughs> I said, well, We've been sitting on the corner this whole time. We, we probably look a little needy also. Meaty and needy. There you go. So. There you go. Yep. There you go. So, um, <laughs> uh, is there, are there other cons that they get? You only go to the Dallas Comic Con with them, correct? Well, we try to go to the Jackson Mississippi Con a few months ago. I don't know if I oh, told you I about that. Oh, I forgot about that. Sting was there, wasn't he? Yeah, we stood out line for 45 minutes in 100 degree heat, and it was totally disorganized, and we oh, just that's sad. we left. Uh, that's we, sad. It was four of us on that trip, and I said, as a Democratic vote, why don't we vote if we are going to leave or not? Because this is ridiculous. We're right. Just, people are, like, we were already getting like sunburns on our neck from standing outside in this line. Goodness gracious. And everybody voted to go except for Brandon. Of course. He was willing to tough it out, and he was outruled, and he was, as they say, not a happy camper. Yeah, well, I mean, he would have been just as miserable if he'd have stayed out there another two hours. Yeah, people were like just their, they were like fixed up in their costumes and paint. There was paint like pouring on people's face. It was not quite Indiana Jones, but it was, I mean, it was hot. (laughs) That's sad. That's sad. I, I hate disorganization. Now, I won't ever go back. There's, there's, a, yeah, and that's why, that's why I said about Dallas. I was just so disappointed with everything how it was run. And like I said, it can change too, and Jackson can change too. Um, one that wasn't disorganized. I went to one in Knoxville, and they just had never run a panel before. So instead of just handing the mic in the crowd, you know, or having a mic in the crowd, he said, "Would anyone like to come up and ask a question?" And I looked at Megan. I went. Is he saying go up on stage with the actor? I said, I think he is. And so I raised my hand. He said, okay, come on up. 
And so I got up and I grabbed the mic from him and I sat down next to Adrian Paul, the Highlander, and we talked for a good 15, 20 minutes. So kept, you, you hijacked the... I hijacked the whole thing. And you know, Megan had it on video where he's trying to grab... The, I swear I didn't see him, but every time he goes for the mic, I move away and start talking again. I ask another question or I say this or say... And I, we're getting the crowd... I'm getting the crowd laughing. You know, I'm talking to him. I'm having a great time. You are I'm the party host. Sitting there with Adrian Paul. And... Um, and it was just, it was so much fun. And I remember eventually he just, he wrestled the mic. I was like, what is he doing? Because I had no idea I kept moving every time he made a grab for the mic. I wasn't doing it on purpose, but when I saw the video, I was like, oh, wow. I think two times he tried to go for it. I didn't even look at him, and I was mo- I just started walking the other way or whatnot with it. And he probably thought he's doing this to me on purpose, and he finally just rested from me. And I was like, why, is he so, why so mad, bro? But then I sat back down, and I was like, yeah. And, you know, I, I had some people coming up afterwards after the panel going, Man, you were great out there. So, oh, thanks, man. Appreciate it. So afterwards, I got his autograph and everything, and told him thanks for letting me uh, chat with you and everything. But that was so much fun. And the next year we went, the mic was in the crowd. They kind of learned. Their they, had there. Yeah, uh-huh they had to take away. Yeah, they had to take. They had to take away, and they did a few other things that were. They didn't have a. What's it called? A ready room, a refreshment room, a break room for the celebrities. A green room. A green room. Thank you. They didn't have one. And so they just kind of moved him over to a corner and had people going, uh, not now, please. Oh, not now. Just when the, the next year they had blue curtains set up around. They sectioned off an area. If you see them before they come out, that kind of takes the special out of it. Well, yeah. But I, I think this is when they were just taking their little break or whatnot on their phones or whatnot. They needed them to take well, a yeah, call. Well, yeah, they still don't need to be seen. Get something to eat. But they don't need to be seen. And, and they realized this was not the right way to do it. Sure. So it was a nice disorganized. It wasn't anything sloppy. They were great. The staff was great with everyone. They were super nice. Um, it's still back before you know the pandemic and everything, but it was still one of our favorite cons to go to. We still always had fun. So, what other ones have you been to, by the way? I went to I went to New York Comic Con. You did two thousand eleven, uh, ten years ago. Wow. Yep. That is crazy to think about. Now that was a big one. Yep. That was right when Walking Dead was really starting to it blow just exploded. Up. Yeah. And it was, it was on season just two heavy on zombies. And of course. It it's to be expected. Tons it, of panels, tons of actors. It was, it was... Well, I think they had the whole cast there for that, and that was the first time they'd actually done a comic con. Well, I don't know, I don't know about The Walking Dead, who, who was there from, but I know it was zombie-driven. It was before I'd ever even watched the show. I was well, totally out of, out of the loop. It was very early. It was yeah. like season two or something, And because uh, Megan saw went, can we go there? I was like, No. But, like, everyone was there, you know, and you hadn't seen everyone there before. But And, and then breaking breaking up that cast, they were in, they sprinkled and were here and there around everyone. Eventually, she met most of them over well, the years. Well, the coolest thing from that con, uh, other than just kind of going with uh, Ralph and his little girl at that point, uh, was seeing, like, an Action Comics number one, and, like, the dealer saying, yeah, you can pick it up. And, like, I was yeah. holding an Action Comics number one. That's a cool That's a cool memory. Yeah. You always have with you. Yeah. Yeah, So, no. it's, like, just... Who's the coolest celebrity you've ever had to meet at a con? You've ever gotten to meet at a con? Um, Who was the most fun? I've, that's the thing. I haven't really done any of that at You don't cons. do that at cons. You just yeah. do people watching mainly. Yeah. It's that old mall habit. Well, I think we sit like, up at the mall meeting a just, celebrity is kind of, uh, you know, it's it can be rough if it doesn't go well. So that yeah, your your heroes can a, be destroyed before yeah, your eyes. You know, and being in a cattle call like that can be kind of kind of weird. True. So um, true. I see that. So no wrestler or anything would make you go. I gotta shake his hand. Oh well, yeah. I'm at a. I, yeah. Uh, yeah, I met the honky tonk man at a uh, okay. at an independent show in Tennessee. Like, okay, that wasn't a con, but that was fun. Yeah, yeah, me no honky tonk. Yeah. So, any other? Is there any other wrestler that you would say, yeah, I'm going to go to that con and I've got to get a picture with this guy, or I've got to talk uh, to this guy? I got to ask him this question, my burning question. <sighs> Have you been watching um, Dark Side of the Ring? Yes. Plane ride from hell. Yes. Saw the episode. Yes. Yes. That's why I didn't comment when you commented on Ric Flair. He's getting such <laughs> so much bad press. Oh well, yeah. He's he's got a, a propeller trick. We hear now. Well, th- that trick has been around for forty years. <laughs> True. Uh, it's just now. It's just now public. 
Well, I think it's now um, those stories have been around for a long time, and I think now a new generation of people have been introduced to pro wrestling and, and things like that who uh, aren't as uh laugh it off as the well yeah it's a different it's a different, different culture era. different yeah. era uh wrestling was a carny business so does that mean people watching dark side of the ring that's interesting yeah i, I think so um the context and we're already opening up a big can of worms um that's fine well i I'm, i don't want to we got a few minutes i we think it's this. just it's not surprising to someone that's followed the that genre. Right. In fact, I think a lot of that was um, well, that was the fan news. Lesnar would would tell you about that. You knew after insurrection when you didn't see some of your stars the next night on Monday Night Raw, they're like, wait, what? What's going on? And then it was like, my buddy would always watch Ra- WWF Raja or whatever, and some of those fan sites that would kind of give you the behind the scenes. Oh of yeah, the dirt sheets and uh, what what went down the night before, what happened after execution, what happened, and what happened backstage or what happened on the ride back. Yeah, and yeah. He was reading up on it and said, "Oh man, no, Scott yeah, we Hall knew about all that fired. that happened. So and so got so if you were on the if you were on the fan, the the real behind the scenes, it's exposing websites, it to a larger audience. It's it's on a much larger scale. Okay, I didn't know how big this show was. Well, I mean, I it just because it's on TV, it gets new, it gets some it got I, some traction. Yeah, I think okay. it's just on the yeah, it's uh, it's easier to find. Okay. You know, it's not like like you can watch it on YouTube. It's not hard to okay. find it. Um, but yeah, it's uh, is, quite a show. Is there a story you'd like for them to go into? They've covered that. some really good stuff so far, right. and uh, at, at they're covering good stuff this year. I mean, they're they're doing a pretty pretty solid job of the, the guys that do that show covering up. all the backstage stuff, the behind the what it says, dark side of the ring. Yeah, I didn't think, think it was going to be happy, funny stories, and that's what I said. Uh, somebody was what asking was me about. I'm like, you know, it's in the title. Yeah, you know, this is this is going to be. What they don't want you to know about. This is not lights, camera, action. Uh, as far as like a wrestling topic, I think the biggest topic that um, really wouldn't be a topic it would be mostly about a person is uh, there's a guy named Tully Blanchard that wrestled uh, in the 80s. For, right. And he was kind of blackballed out of the sport for a failed drug test. And and I think that that story could 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 be a, a good story to tell especially at what he's done with his life after that and uh kind of how poorly handled that was so i didn't realize this i was googling the show i didn't know i didn't realize this was on season three yeah holy cow this is the second this half of season three too holy cow so i've got some catching up to do yeah no I, i've only watched one or two there's one about chris jericho wasn't there I can't remember because I've seen a bunch of other ones too. Like I watched the old documentary about it was going to be on Bret Hart's final year, but it turned it out being about the uh, Montreal screw job oh, behind yeah. the scenes. Yeah, stuff. that's a wrestling with shadows. Yeah, wrestling the shadows turned out to be something completely different. Yeah, yeah, that was great. So I'd forgotten about that one. You know, that's interesting. What's been your favorite one out of all those of the series so far? Ooh, um. I really like the first one. It's about a wrestler named Bruiser Brody that was murdered in Puerto Rico. Mm. I thought it was a it was a very uh, it's a I mean it's a, it's a good story. It's sad. The one on Benoit is really good. It's yeah, sad. Yeah, that one's really sad. Uh, Eddie Guerrero. Eddie Guerrero's going to be sad yeah, too. But so all of that. Um, Owen Hart. Yeah, rough. Yeah, those are the those are those are really rough moments for fans because those were, I mean, Chris Benoit took a really dark turn really fast. Yeah, there's nothing. Yeah, and um, Eddie's is just sad, and so is Owen's. So, yeah, yeah. wow, wow, it is kind of crazy, but yeah, it's a. Uh, I don't know. That's interesting. Interesting series. Mm-hmm. Maybe for another day. I need to catch up on all those. Yeah. Maybe we can talk about those. For sure. All right. So, overall, would you uh, would you tell people, would you recommend at Dallas Comic Con? 100%. 100%. No, you'd go back next year, too. Yeah. I mean, the biggest thing, the only thing that was really a takeaway that uh, prices are, de- it's definitely a different kind of market right now. Right. Um, and I think they have, it's kind of like going to... 
there's things there that they're showing that are for sale, but they're not really for sale. Like, I mean, no one's coming in there, I don't think, with $10,000 to buy an X-Men number six. Those days are gone. That are That's graded an 8.5. Exactly. I mean, maybe, but it seemed like every day we walked by, the big, big books were in the same place as they were the day before. Like, they weren't moving. Um, so I think it's more of just like a... Maybe it's more for dealers to trade. I don't know, but it, okay. you know. Yeah, all right, all right. Well, there but you it's, go. It's cool. It's a, a definitely fun if you're a comic fan. If you're in that genre, I think it's good to go because uh, it's just a lot to take in. If you got kids, there's tons of stuff like that. Right, um, that they can do too. Yeah, it's a good thing. Cool. Well, there you go, folks. So, if you uh, hey, in the comments below, let us know. Have you gone to a Comic Con this year? If so, what well, which one was it? How was it like? If not, uh, do you want to go back to one? Do you want to go? Are you ready to go back to one? Or have you ever been to one? Let us know. We enjoy the comments, and uh, we'll see you next time on Princes of the Universe.